The Alice decision does not mean that software is not eligible for patent protection. In fact, the court never even mentioned software in its decision. Rather, the court focused on the case before it and whether Alice's invention was eligible for patent protection. It has no holding that software cannot be patented or that computer implemented inventions in general cannot be patented. Rather, the decision is simply an incremental advance in the law clarifying that there's a two-step test and that two-step test for patent eligibility is a general one to be applied regardless of the subject matter. The impact of Alice will play out over a number of years. In patent litigation, we can expect to see patent defendants who are challenging patents, particularly software patents, to claim that a patentee's software patent covers some general abstract idea and that it is merely implemented on a general purpose computer. On the other side, we can expect patent owners to say that their patents do not cover fundamental ideas, the ones that are long prevalent, which were the types of things that the court was concerned with in Alice, because most software is much more incremental and focused on very specific implementations. We can also expect to see an increase in patent challenges in what are called post-grant proceedings before the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. These include covered business method reviews, post-grant reviews, and inter-parties reviews. Alice affords companies more opportunities to argue that patents are invalid under Section 101 in these types of proceedings without having to go to federal district court to make those types of arguments.